met a gypsy. The difference between riders is how hard is that to manage sometimes in terms of just what they're asking. Like, so I had a friend who I won't name who did some suspension testing and like uh, rode, he rode Kenny's Honda 450 and then he rode Christian's Honda 450 when they were teammates for outdoors mm-hmm. and was just like, bro, <laughs> Ken Roxon <and> suspension. <laughs> but Christian Craig sets up the most beautiful motorcycle I've ever ridden. Yeah. So I, it's like, I agree. How is that to deal with? Um, I think you have to kind of, um, I'm going to say swallow your pride or, or your ego, but it's not really the right way to say it either. Because what I like, I have ridden Christian's bikes on when he, when we were KYB, I thought his bike was unbelievable. And then I rode it in 20 when he filled in and that was Shell Showa and that was unbelievable. Whatever way he pushes the development of his bike fits me. Awesome. I still talk about Christian's bike from especially That's cool. from those. Yeah, because it just the feel of the main I guess it's mainly suspension. The what he likes apparently is what I like. <laughs> yeah. You know, it just feels plush but firm and we we talk about this all the time um with you know the guys at the shop and all that. But what I like and like I said what apparently what he likes is not the same for everyone. There's not one thing and and yeah, Kenny's a prime example of that. And then um or chase, you know, or or someone like you know, they're different different styles, and I can't like when I'm like, you just rode that, and then you rode that. You really didn't pick that. <laughs> That's what I feel like, you know. <laughs> yeah. But it, it just it makes me realize like this guy is one of the gnarliest guys in the world. I think he kind of knows what he likes, and if he doesn't like that and he likes this, it just makes me realize that not everybody's the same. Yeah, there is no objective good. Yeah, there's not. You can't just make which makes it extremely tough for a production bike right to make a one production bike setup that works good like everybody's going to be like dude this thing's good you yeah. know i mean i don't th- i don't think it's impossible to make something that's kind of Very right down the middle of the road yeah. yeah and and whatever and uh but yeah that when i those kind of situations make me just kind of realize that like people are so different in what they want and um plenty of people had told ken or ricky back in the day perfect example well, that, that you know? he's the perfect example. yeah like like how are you riding this thing and uh and it's just yeah some people can't they don't understand and but for that guy it makes sense and i mean ken with his setup was kind of a especially at the time maybe 19 and 20 and 21 maybe um Unadilla. His bike is low in the front, kind of soft in the front. At least it looks that way, right? And the shock's up high and and it looks like it would be really nervous that way, like anything would be. And the dude dominates at the (laughs) ruddiest, gnarliest track (laughs) and just murders everybody. So um, it's just like, it's like different different strokes for different folks kind of deal. You know, it's it's, it's hard to understand for me, especially. And, And so like, where do you draw the line? At letting a dude just be like the weirdest guy, <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, so I know I, I know a story of Dean Ferris gets signed to CDR Yamaha, and they're basically just like, nah, like that's not how we're doing this suspension because he has like a real funky setup that he likes. He just come off winning a bunch of stuff in Europe, and he like had the setup, and then went there and they shut it down, and then he basically just cracked the shits, flew to America with stock suspension but the what like valve for him like he had his guy do it the way he wanted and i think that's when he got that third at high point mm. and then that was a highlight of his year <laughs> like he just because <laughs> they, they were not down to like let him go in that direction and then there's another one oh and then the same thing happened to him when he was riding for yamaha here when he got the factory right oh yeah yeah and they were just like no right not doing it and they gave him the bike that like they thought worked so what? Where's the line? Like, have you ever had that situation where it's like you've almost pulling rank? Like, nah, bro, we can't. Like, if some no one can run a Ricky setup from O2 now. Like, <laughs> like is that if like let's say Jet came to you and was like, "This is how I ride, bro." Yeah, it'd be hard to argue with a guy like Jet, and it was hard to argue with a guy like Ricky. I mean, <laughs> I suppose you yeah. know when you go twenty four and zero, and your bike looks like that, you can't really 
come at him. Well, I mean, but even then, like, we did. I mean, at that time, we're, it was outdoors was one thing. I mean, he had those guys handle, but Supercross, the way, especially in the whoops, like he was, it was, it was tough for him. And we're like, hey, that's it's because of this, and you kind of like have to fight that, I guess, to try to get them. I mean, even Chase in in outdoors, you know, like didn't want to run his Supercross like chassis and everything like that. We we were very confident it was better, but the balance for me is like if the rider believes so strongly that he's right it's going to be tough for you to go no you're wrong <laughs> yeah. and like are you really going to get the best rider like the best out yeah. of your rider and um and also you know like uh Tim Geyser's thing like happy rider fat or whatever um the, the guy's got to be happy and and feeling like you're you know so to be able to convince him to do that is is tough sometimes um but then again, I guess I haven't had something where I'm like, you're completely out to lunch, bro. Like you, you we're not, <laughs> yeah. we're not doing that. And some of the things, um, it'd have, it'd have to be really, really out there and mainly like a safety issue for a us left to like hand go. throttle. <laughs> <It's something weird. laughs> yeah. I want two throttles. Yeah. Or like some, or like, Hey, I drilled a big hole in my frame. Like, you know, <laughs> Back it home. feels better. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah, exactly. like, hey, bro, we can't do that. Yeah. 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 Um, stuff like that is, uh, like you got to kind of like talk to them in a way and we can realize like, okay, this is why it's not just because we don't want to try it. It's, it's tough when it comes to suspension and, you know, guys coming with like what they've brought like that. I haven't had to deal with that that much, but at the same time, I don't, I don't think that we would be too proud or anything to, to consider other alternatives, you know? Like if there's if there's something you love about that, let's figure out what that is and try to make it work with what we've got, you know, while incorporating the things that we know. Yeah. It would probably be more something like that rather than just hell no, we're not doing that, you know, because then then they're just pissed and then they they're like, oh, screw this guy, they don't want to work with me anyways. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. no, makes sense. So for people that are listening to this that might not know that 2002 setup <laughs> <laughs> yeah could you explain to someone that never saw ricky's bike what he was working with yeah i mean it, like the bike in stock form doesn't look too much different than any modern bike currently right like you know height wise and everything like that i think and and i could maybe butcher some of this because at the time like i said 2002 i'd only been working there like a year and a half and i You're really still on didn't. the broom at this point yeah 100 percent. yeah and so anyways but i mean his subframe was cut like right now we we talk about cutting subframes and we're like five mil sometimes like getting a little bit crazy two and a half mil we'll cut that you know that's nothing i mean you know what two and a half mil looks like on your, when you open your finger if you people that don't know it's like that yeah it's not a quarter of a centimeter yeah <laughs> so that's your butt getting that much further down right on yeah. the thing i mean ricky's we were like minus 30 like the the suffering was like so low, and um, not only that, but his his shock was really soft and extremely dead. Like the rebound was so strong that it like it would it would just come in and just slowly come back, you know, and be soft. And and any video you watch him riding, the back end of the bike is way down and it's doing this, but he loved it. Like he just he never wanted it to hit him in the butt. So that, and then the seat would be like uh, cut down. The seat was cut down. And for a while, we had like XR foam <laughs> out of a <laughs> out of an XR like six hundred or four hundred <laughs> or something. And that that foam cut onto our seat, and he would bring the seat from his house sometimes and be like, "Here's my seat," and it'd be thrashed. And Goose is like, "Bro, like we have a brand new seat," and he's like, "Yeah, but this one feels good." So like, put this one on, put a new seat cover on it, and run it for the race. Fork wise, I think it was probably somewhat normal but because the rear was so low it you know you know but the biggest thing i guess was his handlebars like he his bar mounts like now we would we would never we used to have a top clamp with a front hole mount which is basically like kind of what stock is now and a back so there was like the way that they designed it was was really cool like they've had it forever the the clamps design of our bar mounts on on hrc is the same that it's been since like the 90s wow yeah it's it's basically the same concept it's you have the front mount and then you can go back three back six back nine and if you go to the back hole if you went back nine it'd be the opposite like you would get to what if if it was like back 12 yeah yeah, yeah. and then you can go back 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 and then you can go back the other way he had like back nine off the back hole mount way back there 
and his handlebars roll down to where they're like all the way down. And they're nine nine nines, whatever, so they're like really low. They're yeah, no low. sweep, just flat. Oh, and they're just way down like this. And it was I mean, and I wrote it like that actually. We did a magazine like tryout. Or like they we let like dirt rider or somebody ride it and we wouldn't let them change the bars. It was like you gotta ride it like that. It was super funny. But super hard to ride. But I remember riding that thing that you'd go over uh, like a, a kicker or breaking bunk or something like that, and you wouldn't even feel it. The back would just soak it up, and you just went in the turn. I guess if you had a bunch of them and you started packing, and then then it's doing this, that'd be another story like it did for him a lot. But it was kind of a crazy cool feeling to have that much rebound and not have the thing do anything. You literally, like you went through it like you never went through a bump. And then... You know, if, as long as it wasn't too many of them, it was, it was great. You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that his whole setup, uh, as far as rear and and handlebar, everything else was pretty normal, I guess. You know, when it comes to engine setup and and all and all that, um, gearing whatnot. But yeah, that was that was pretty gnarly. That was that was a trip. We are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, GypsyTales.com packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.